Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to WEDF United. I'm Connor Whitty calling the action along this time, and we're kicking things off with Bo Dallas. Weighing in at 234 pounds, Bo Dallas! Obviously, this has been a, a, a tough period of time for the Wyatt family, losing one of their own. Uh, rest in peace, Luke Harper. Uh, and, you know, even months after the fact, after the tragedy, after the tragic announcement of the death of Luke Harper, it has to be running in the mind of Bo Dallas, of Bray Wyatt, Eric Rowan. So, and and obviously it cannot be easy for, uh, it cannot be easy for anybody. Brody Lee was such a great human being, such a selfless man. And, you know, he, he's still, to this day, he's still missed. And his opponent, from Columbus, Ohio, Matt Icorn coming down to the ring and he's been involved in this whole Wyatt family saga really for as long as I've been around you know uh, during the suspect retirement show he was there for the retirement show of one of his mentors the suspect and he had his last match for a while against Bray Wyatt but when he returned he returned uh, to fight off the Wyatt family then of course that uh, that of course led into uh, him being involved in the saga alongside Danny Jackpot. Really, kind of being Danny Jackpot's uh, closest ally against the Wyatt family. So one on one here between Matt Icord and Bo Dallas, or brother Bo. Of course, he is the biological brother of Bray Wyatt. There's a, a kind of a weird dynamic here. Although Bray Wyatt, although Bo Dallas is the only one who's biologically related to... Oh my god! Matt Icord, that might be it! Cover! That's it already! He just goes for a kill shot and then immediately... Uh, you know, I, I didn't even process that was the kill shot until it was so sudden I couldn't even process that was the kill shot until the three count was made. Good God, man, I could just dispatching a brother bow in mere seconds. I I don't even know how long that was. That was not long at all. Wow, well, ladies and gentlemen, we have some tag team action on the SmackDown side. Two teams who have uh, not been featured that much. They're really wanting to prove themselves. The, the duo of Axel and Slater against Connor and Victor of the Ascension. Seems these are coming out together. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. On the way to the ring, at a combined weight of 444 pounds, Pete Slater and Curtis Axel, the Job Squad. Oh no! What? Did they just call? <laughs> oh no! What did JoJo just call these two? Oh no! Well, that's rough. That's a rough distinction to be uh, known as. That's not a legacy you want to adopt.
Look at Victor. Good lord. And they're opponent. At a combined weight of 487 pounds, Connor and Victor. The Ascension. The Ascension. Uh, ever since coming to WDF, they have not scored uh, a victory yet. They haven't really found themselves on a, a decent track. They haven't found that, you know, consistency. Well, they haven't found a consistency of success. They found a consistency in failure. And that is not a consistency you want to have. And it's almost a surprising uh, consistency, considering that uh, Victor was one of the later students of the Heart Dungeon. You know, uh, a lot, he was, I, I feel like he was at that kind of group alongside, you know, uh, Tyson Kidd. So that's interesting. That's interesting just how, you know, just how uh, different those two have been in terms of success. Despite, oh, being in relatively the same class. Of the Heart Dungeon, of course, we are uh, starting with Big Connor. No relation, by the way. Uh, I'm a C, he's a K. Oh! Oh, well. Slater's not in a good position. He is in enemy territory. And Tag Team 101, you do not want to be in your uh, enemy's corner. You want to keep it to your corner. The Ascension. Oh, double back elbow. Gonna go for a pin. Only gets a one count. Heat Slater is a bit tougher than that to uh, take down. Oh. But uh, Victor is not gonna make it easy for Slater to hang on. Oh, and wait a minute. Carter got a cheap shot in before the tag, before the double team move. And now they're just beating the hell out of Heath Slater. This is rough on uh, poor Heath. Oh, a spine buster. And a cover. One. Oh. Slater at least knew where he was to get the ropes. And wait a minute, I don't know if the ref saw that. Axel was busy distracting the ref. Oh! A doomsday device! But uh oh, wait a minute, Victor. He could have gone for the pin. If he had gone for the pin, that would have been it. The doomsday device is not a move a lot of people kick out of, but Victor didn't capitalize. Now Curtis Axel's in! Of course, he comes from a wrestling dynasty. He's his father is the legendary Mr. Perfect, Kurt Hedding. His grandfather, Larry the Axe Hedding. And, oh! And wait, 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 wait! Potter's going to the top rope! But Axel brings him down! Axel's on a roll! Axel Mania, running wild! Only a two, and Victor could barely get his shoulder up. Which tells me that was a rough landing on those ropes. Oh, the drop kick. And, oh. Oh, Victor. And it's interesting because uh, Axel, like, uh, Axel, like Victor, was uh, trained by legendary pro wrestlers. Hang on, Axel, Axel, two, three. Take your eyes off him for one second. Take your eyes off the opponent for one second, and they could, that could happen. Vic yes, they're not uh, doing the job tonight. Slater and Axel pick up the win. Well, coming up next, we have uh, some tag team action. It'll be Alberto Del Rio alongside Angel Garza teaming up with Kevin Owens against The Big Show 
and Sami Zayn. previous uh, life as uh, El Generico in the Independence and in Ring of Honor in uh, PWG all over the world. He was uh, known under the identity of El Generico. And uh, Alberto Del Rio feels that's mocking Lucha Libre. That is mocking his culture. That is mocking, uh, you know, pro wrestling in, you know, that Lucha Libre style. He mocked the Lucha Libre legacy, of course, his father, Dos Caras, his brother, Ajijo Dos Caras, but his uncle is one of the most legendary luchadors in the history, Mil Mascara. And to tell you just how legendary Mil Mascara is, well, the dude was uh, in motion pictures in uh mexico a lot of in mexico the bigger stars are seen in movies they're big parts of a film they make get whole movies made about them and his partner from maryville Quebec, canada weighing in at 266 pounds the wwe Here's a man that would love a movie to be made of him. Kevin Owens. The dude has such an ego. He has such a, you know, has such a bloated ego. But he has the talent to back it up. And that is important. It's okay to have an ego if you can back up your words. If you can back up what you're saying. And Kevin Owens has quite a successful track record. He's beaten the likes of Malik Brown. He has beaten Adrian Neville. Uh, you know, he has beaten so many uh, top guys uh, in his uh, days at WBDF. But here is both men's mortal nemesis. Sami Zayn, of course, the former El Generico. Sami Zayn, you know, what's there to say about him? The dude is talented. The dude has a fighting spirit unmatched by anybody in WEDF. Sami Zayn has the heart of a warrior. And he goes in every single week fighting like it is his last match because in this industry you never know when it is Andre the Giant. I don't think, aside from Andre, I don't think anybody can match the longevity, the, the sheer aura, the presence of the world's largest athlete 
The Big Show. There's been many big men after Andre the Giant who have come and gone. There's been, a, a, you know, tons of big men. There's been John Tenta, uh, aka Earthquake. There's been Viscera. There's been, you know, uh, Yokozuna. Bam Bam, Mark Henry, Umaga, Psycho Sid. And that is uh, barring some of the more iconic big men. For better or worse, you could put John Gonzalez in there. I don't think he's iconic for good reasons, my Oh, and Alberto Del Rio wants nothing to do with Sami Zayn, and Kevin Owens wants everything to do with them. And of course, we have to address the elephant in the room of this match, which is at, at In Your House Return of the Beast, which is the very next show on the WDF calendar. Uh, Sami Zayn will battle Alberto Del Rio, and Kevin Owens will be defending the United States Championship against the Big Show. So both of these guys, will, all four of these men will be facing off at In Your House Return of the Beast. Oh, a kick right to the face of Alberto Del Rio. And now Sami Zayn gets his hands on Del Rio. And oh no. What is he setting up for? Oh God. Oh no. That cannot be a pleasant experience. Oh, wait a minute. Angel Garza. Oh, wait a minute. Big Show. Big Show was distracted for a bit by Angel Garza, who's Alberto Del Rio's apprentice, I guess, his protege. Angel Garza recently debuted in WBDF along and a battle Sami Zayn. Oh, my God. Now he's in uh, Del Rio's corner for both this match and his match at Return of the Beast. Oh no. Oh no, you hear that smack? Kevin Owens, oh Kevin Owens takes down the big show. Kevin Owens trying to weaken his opponent, but the big show. Oh, backstabber. Cover. Oh, but his feet touched the ropes. Uh, that was, uh, I'm not sure about that, ref. Oh, and Del Rio. Oh, he tried again. He tried to go for something, but. Oh, oh that's smart by Del Rio. He's going to have to get, oh, he realized Big Show was going to have to turn him around if he wanted to go for the WMD or the choke slam. And that bought Del Rio just enough time. Oh. That bought Del Rio just enough time of recovery to be able. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, what is he doing? Big Show's wanting his hands on uh, Kevin Owens. But Kevin Owens fighting back. Now Del Rio. Oh. Big Show wanted to get his hands on Kevin Owens. He's just fighting both of these guys. He's wanting to fight them both. And now finally giving Sami Zayn a turn. He's like, yeah, I had my fun. Sami, you're up. And flatliner by Sami Zayn. Up the leg. Referee sliding into position. Only a two. And maybe that could have been a three if there was that split. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, well, sit. Del Rio was fired up, and oh! Sam is in now. Uh, Del Rio still not wanting anything to do with Alberto Del Rio. Or rather, the other way around. Del Rio wants nothing to do with Sammy Zayn. Sammy Zayn wants everything to do with Del Rio. He wants his hands on him right now. But Del Rio wants to wait for uh, Return of the Beast. And oh my god! 
These two have a long lasting rivalry. These two men are destined to do this forever. Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn are the best of friends, but they're also the worst of enemies. Oh, Cannonball! Out the leg, two, no. Well, these two know each other like the backs of their hands. Uh, I and bet that every move that either guy has, the other would have a counter for it. Oh, uh, wait, wait, Del Rio! Alberto Del Rio! Cheap shotting! Sami Zayn! Damn it! Come on! And, and oh, the, I I don't like the sound of that scream. I don't. I do not like the way he just screamed. Uh, oh. Oh, chop. He's still going back and forth. Uh-oh, uh-oh, wait, wait, oh! I thought it was gonna set up for the halluva cake. Oh, a super kick! And Kevin Owens is gonna exploit the hell out of that 10 count. And Del Rio, oh! And a German on the outside. Wow, and oh, wait a minute. Owens went for a cheap shot, but Sami Zayn caught him. Oh, Blue Thunder Bomb. What is Del Rio doing? Sami Zayn crawling to the Big Show, but Big Show doesn't have his hand out. Del oh my God! Look at Del Rio! Oh, an elbow to the back. Del Rio into no. Sammy Zayn with the drop kick! Tag made a big show. Wait a minute, uh, Sammy Zayn! I don't know what the hell is happening there. But uh, interesting statistic about Sammy Zayn and uh, oh Kevin Owens. These two have wrestled in 21 singles matches, 18 on uh, the independents, no, 18 on the independents, and three here in WBDF. Well, that is, uh, uh, those two have fought a lot, and they've battled in the likes of the 2011 Battle of Los Angeles. They've battled in an unsanctioned match in the Ring of Honor. They've battled in Ladder Wars. They've battled Last Man Standing. Oh, wait a minute! Big step up the choke slam! He has put away many an opponent with that one. And you see Sammy, what is he doing? Big Show, wait. That's what he was doing. He was waiting for Sammy Zayn. He wants Sammy to be the one to pin Del Rio. And a halluva kick. 
I was wondering what Big Show was doing. He was waiting to give him to Sami Zayn. And it works. Sami Zayn and the Big Show pick up the win. And if that happens, a return of the beast. And Sami Zayn. Here are your winners, Sami Zayn and the Big Show. If that happens at Return of the Beast, if Sami lands a hell of a kick, then Del Rio would have lost back to back to Sami Zayn. Imagine what that would do to his poor ego. Well, coming up next, some more tag team action. The team of Alex Riley and Mojo Riley against one of the greatest tag teams in the history of professional wrestling, Bubba and Devon, the Dudley Boys. The what? I don't know what the hell JoJo just called them, but I don't think that's their team name. Unless there's something I'm missing. Look at these two. On, not Devin Jojo. God damn it. But yeah, one of the greatest tag teams of all time. Bubba and Devon, the Dudley Boys. What haven't they done? They're, those two are 10 time, 10 time tag team champions. In one company alone, then you add the TNA World Tag Team Championships, and you get a 12-time champion. There are 12-time tag team champions. Then you add the ECW Tag Titles, which they have won eight times. Then you add their two IWGP Tag Title reigns. Then you add their Super Tag Title reign with Hustle. And, and then you add one more championship that they've had and you will find that the Dudley boys are 24 time tag team champions in their careers. Just those two, just those two together are 24 time tag team champions. That is insane. That is insane. And God, and they have also, and all they have also won the uh, world, the world's strongest tag. Let me see if I'm getting this right. The world's strongest tag determination league. That's uh, that's a mouthful. But they have won the that all Japan tournament in 2005, I believe. And they were facing the likes of Kaz Hayashi and Satoshi Kojima. And in the finals, they battled Keiji Muto and Akebono. Which is a hell of a dangerous tandem. If you know anything about uh, Keiji Muto, the legendary great Muda. Oh no. Oh no. What's up? Right to the little mojos. 
That is not good. Mojo Rawley. Mojo Rawley's been kind of juggling his time between uh, the main roster and NXT. And of course, he was he figured, hey, you know, if I get double, then maybe I'll win. And it hasn't worked out just yet. But if they were to somehow pull off this victory against the Dudley Boys, then that would be one of the greatest upsets in tag team history. And I don't think I mean that, but then they're probably. Ooh. Um, double A. Uh, look at this. Uh, Alex Riley is just trying to survive. <laughs> yeah, he wants nothing to do with this. He's like, I'm out. And I don't blame him. But Bojo Riley with a takedown to Bully Ray. Sorry, Bubba Ray. He's gone by the name Bully Ray a few times. He won the TNA World Championship under that name. Oh! Wow! Alex Riley, they're doing whatever they can to get anything on the Dudley boys. They've gotten a lot more offense than I expected of these two, considering they're not really a full-fledged like team. They're not a fully formed team. Fact that I, I don't remember, but is this the first time they've teamed together? No, I believe it's their second time teaming together. Of course, they're uh, I think their first team together was with against the New Day in a losing effort. I'm not sure what brought Alex Riley and Mojo Riley together. I'm I, I'm not too sure, but they they have some sort of common ground with each other. It could be that both of them were uh, were in uh, football together. Well, not exactly at the same time, but both of them were in that kind of football. Both of them have that football background. Both of them have history in the gridiron, as they say. A little bit of miscommunication that, again, as I was saying, they're not a fully formed team. And you can tell in the way that they're wrestling together. In the way that they're just not coexisting as they should be. Mojo Riley actively interfered with uh, one of Alex Riley's uh, offense, offensive attempts. They're just not coexisting just yet. There, there's a piece of this. Oh! Piece of this puzzle missing. Both of them have just been uh, active singles guys. That it's just bizarre to jump. It's a tough transition, I believe, to jump from uh, being a singles guy for most of your career to being a tag team guy. There's been a few people who have just struggled with that, and only two. There have been people who've struggled with that. It's not an uncommon problem to have. Of course, Alex Riley, uh, he's been on and off. Uh, and so, oh God! Alex Riley debuted in season three in the ECCW brand. You know, he had mixed success. Uh, uh, sometimes, you know, he'd uh, pick up wins over uh, the likes of Mason Ryan and Husky Harris. He was the first ever WDF European champion. Oh, but wait a minute! Oh, I can't even list off his accomplishments! Because it's already over! That is a wrap. The 3D almost out of nowhere. As I was listing off his accomplishments, what he's done. Poor Alex Riley gets dropped with the 3D. Devin Dudley and Bubba Ray Dudley, the Dudley Boys. Well, that's that's not a, a, the star Alex Riley and Mojo Riley would have wanted as a team together. But for the Dudleys, it's back to form.
Bravo, making her way to the ring from Orlando, Florida, Naomi. And coming up first is Naomi. And I believe she's scheduled to face Alexa Bliss. If I'm not mistaken. And of course, uh, you know, the women's division. You know, lots going on in the women's division. Of course, that return of the beast. It'll be uh, Sasha Banks and Charlotte Flair. But Naomi has uh, recently, uh, just on United, on the last episode of United, she picked up a win over Nikki Bella. Naomi is all fired up, ready to go. She was uh, on the losing end of an eight woman tag team match on SmackDown. Wait a minute. Alexa Bliss is not medically cleared. Both women, it's a very brutal situation. Uh, a lot full of injury and stuff. And, and oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Accompanied by Alexa Bliss from San Diego, California, Maya Jack. Oh, no. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is Nia Jax, the destructive force, part of the legendary Ottawa'i family, alongside, ironically enough, Naomi. Nia Jax making her, this is not good. Naomi realizes this, this is uh, only the second appearance, I believe, of Nia Jax in WDF. We haven't seen her since the 10 year anniversary. So this is her formal debut, I would like to believe. And Naomi's just trying to do whatever she can to get an edge over Nia Jax, the indestructible force. Oh! Good lord, a back elbow. Nia Jax just gonna throw Naomi around like a rag doll. Oh, well, Naomi's trying something. Trying whatever she can. Oh, well that was, that was uh, Naomi. Avoid a disaster right there. Almost landed on uh, the steps. Two. Wait, wait. Oh! And oh! That. Uh, Head fight. And Nia Jax is just dominating here. Oh my god, a chop! Naomi trying whatever she can. Naomi can barely not, but she can't, she can't hit anything. Oh, she can't hit anything. And good Lord. Oh God. And try oh oh my god and oh god this is this 
is almost hard to watch. Naomi, oh, you see the desperation set in. The desperation set in. And the, oh, God! Look at Naomi. She's clutching her ribs. That is 272 pounds crashing onto you. And it doesn't matter what shape, you know, what shape your body is. It doesn't matter what, you know. Oh, God. Doesn't matter. And nothing matters. 272 pounds crashing in on you is always going to hurt no matter what. Doesn't matter how big, small. Doesn't matter how big or small you are. Doesn't matter if you're a male, female, or anything else. Doesn't matter. That, that amount of weight, that amount of power crashing in on you is going to hurt. And Nia Jax wanting to end it. Sub and drop. Nia Jax is aware that she's the biggest, that she's the strongest, and she uses that to her advantage. And she uses it to put away Naomi. My God. Here is your winner, Nia Jax. Nia Jax just destroyed Naomi. Naomi could, couldn't even get anything in. She had to fight for every single inch. And oh, come on! The match is already over! Come on! The match is already over! This had to have come from Alexa Bliss. This has to be on orders of Alexa Bliss to just destroy Naomi for as long as humanly possible. My God, and Alexa Bliss is taking off the jacket! What? The referee trying to stop this! Wait a minute! Come on! You say you can't fight, but you can ambush someone! Okay, sure! Okay, sure! No, 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 oh my god! You say you're not medically clear, but then you can do this! And god! This is despicable! This is absolutely despicable. This is disgusting. Come on. What the hell? No. Absolutely not. No. No way. It cannot be. Don't tell me it is.
because up next is a, a very interesting match. I'm gonna try to explain it uh, as we go, but oh my god, Karma is here. So uh, this match was originally gonna be a six man. This was originally gonna be a six man match. The Miz and the Club versus Daniel Bryan and the Dream Team, but. Uh, I've not heard anything from AJ Styles. I don't know, even know if he's in the building or not. There's no, been no word from AJ the Styles. Contest is a handicap match. Introducing first from Bismarck, North Dakota, weighing in at 220 pounds, the one sack superstar. Yeah, I, you know, uh, I'm not really. Figured out what the deal is with AJ Styles. I haven't heard from him. Uh, neither of management, so they just decided to go ahead, make this a two on three. Zach Zarr and Daniel Bryan versus the Miz of the club. But uh, AJ Styles has just been very suspicious lately. You, you know, the Dream Team as a whole have just kind of been falling apart. And I think that's because of the presence of Gallows and Anderson, AJ's old friends from the Bullet Club. It, it, you know, they've just been struggling as of late ages, but struggling to balance his two, uh, those two, those friendships, those bonds. And here we go, Mr. Money in the Bank on the run. Listen to this crowd! Daniel Bryan, one of the most beloved superstars in WEDF today! The crowd just chanting yes! Yes! Return of the Beast against Bill Goldberg. A grudge match if I've ever seen one. The Miz and Goldberg. You know, those two men have hated each other for the longest time and they're ready to just end it. has to be focusing on Goldberg in the back of his head, but also he's got to be looking uh, ahead to uh, the WBDF championship match. He has to be wanting to shout out the WBDF title. These two have to be one of the best tag teams in the on the planet right now. One of the best tag teams in the world. 
three-time IWGP Tag Team Champions, winner of the 2013 World Tag League. And they, they beat the likes of Tenkozy. They beat the likes of Andrade San Alves and Tetsuya Naito. They've beaten the likes of Shelton Benjamin and Minoru Suzuki. They've beaten uh, some top-tier teams. And then in their time in uh, WEDF, they've beaten the likes of Booker T and Rob Van Dam. They've uh, beaten the, they've had victories against the Usos and Enzo and Cass. They've, you know, they've just, they've beaten, they've beaten the Brotherhood of American Alpha. They've just been so dominant. And then on their own, they've uh, had a victor over the Dream Team. You know, things have just been looking good. Oh, Zack Star. Even though uh, this team is one man shorter, Zack Starr and Daniel Bryan are incredibly talented uh, performers. They're uh, insanely talented. And oh! Zack Starr, of course. Uh... Wait, wait, what, what the hell's Gallows? What the hell, Big you doing? And Hurricanrana! But wait a minute! Zack Starr, of course, the cousin of Danny Jackpot. Those two. Wait, wait a minute. May's gonna let Big LG do his thing. And oh! And wait a minute! This has just been chaotic from the outset. Whip. Gonna go for No STO by Zach Star. Danny shooting star. If that was from the top rope, he could have gone for a pin after that, but Yeah, Zach Star was debating. I think he was debating for with himself for a little bit if he wanted to get a tag or if he if he wanted to get his hands on uh Carl Anderson just a little bit more. Wait a minute. Daniel, oh, rare miscalculation by Daniel Bryan. A very rare miscalculation by Daniel Bryan and tag made it to the Miz. Miz and Daniel Bryan have a lot of history with each other. They just do not like each other at all. Zack Star, Zack Star coming in, Bulldog. And oh no! One, two, one! Oh, hey, miss, miss! Oh, I think the referee caught it. I, I didn't realize it at first, but Miz had his feet on the ropes. And oh! Overhead backdrop, and oh! And now Carl Anderson was a super kick! And tagged a big LG Luke Gallows. And, oh, uppercut by Daniel Bryan, and oh, wait a minute! Bryan, oh ho ho ho! That was a good punch! And now, Dan Bryan fighting. There are the yes kicks! I'm taking his damn head off. Wait a minute! Carl Anderson! Daniel Bryan just trying to fight off of the club. Wait, Miz. No. Don't. Oh, come on. Oh, backdrop. 
Jackson with the back breaker. No two count. And what about Breaker by the Miz. Miz takes out Daniel Bryan. And oh! And what a minute! That was like a boom drop. But Gallows plants down Zack Star. Sending Zack Star to the ring post. Three. And what is he going for? I thought it was gonna go for some top rope move, I guess not. Guess it's just trying to wear down. Star the rocket kick! Man. Wait, what is he doing? Wait, is. I think he might have had a realization about something. Might have had a last minute change of thought. Oh, God! Oh! Black Star. Carl Anderson, though, uppercut. Drop kick by Zack Star. Oh, wait a minute! Gallus! Grabbing at Zack Star! Not sure what Zack Star was going for, but you know what?
Uh, here we go, main event time! And if you thought the matches before were crazy, then how about some NXT action? This is the second match in the SmackDown Superstar Initiative. It'll be Johnny versus Johnny. Johnny Gargano versus John Morrison. And of course, there you see it, Gargano's DIY partner, Tommaso Ciampa, alongside him for the biggest match of Gargano's career. This is the first time, I believe, in WWF that Johnny Gargano's been in a one-on-one -on -one match. And what a first one-on-one -on -one match! He's facing the Intercontinental Champion, John Morrison. What if Johnny Gargano beats John Morrison? Would he get a shot at the Intercontinental Championship? Could he bring the IC title to SmackDown? Or would they bring Gargano up? Would, it, would Gargano bring the IC title to NXT, sorry? Or would they bring Gargano up to SmackDown? It's an interesting, it's an interesting thought experiment, but so far, Gargano hasn't really competed in any match aside from tag action in WWF. So this is going to be an interesting test of Gargano's uh, singles abilities. And of course, CM Punk created the, the uh, SmackDown Superstar uh, Invitation, the uh, Superstar Initiative. My bad. The SmackDown Superstar Initiative, uh, which is designed to uh, elevate the growth of NXT superstars and kind of uh, elevate the future. To CM Punk, for as for all the shit CM Punk has done, he's always been about the next generation. He's always been about the future. He's always been about giving new people new opportunities, and that's exactly what he's done with the Superstar Initiative here. He did that for Cassius Ono, and now he's wanting to do it for Johnny Gargano, where he goes one-on-one -on -one with Intercontinental Champion John Morrison, and oh, Morrison just, he just cheap-shotted. That is an, an interesting, John Morrison with a cheap shot. Whoa. That's interesting. Of course, last time we saw, well, some Morrison's gonna be uh, defending the Intercontinental Championship, left, right, and center. So this is his first match that hasn't been for an Intercontinental Championship in a little while, I believe. And we're gonna pull himself up. Of course, on SmackDown episode, oh, on uh, episode 363. Hang on, Morrison, Morrison, oh, drop kick to Gargano. Episode 363, John Morrison defended the Intercontinental Championship against Wade Barrett. On episode uh, 365, he defended the Intercontinental Championship against Zack Ryder. And now, just after that match with Ryder, he's facing Johnny Gargano. So, Morrison's been kind of an Iron Man lately. My God! And, and I think it's starting to get to him because Morrison, what's the this vicious? This is a this is a vicious side to John Morrison that I don't think we're used to. Oh, bump right into Gargano. Gargano trying to take advantage. Gargano! Oh. Back and forth, those two men. God, I think this is the first thing Johnny Gargano's had all match. And oh! Flatliner off the top. And Johnny Gargano, obviously the more inexperienced of the two. So John. Oh, oh no!
Well, it wouldn't be a WEDF without a ref bump, would it? And oh, God! That's a rough landing. Gargano hitting the mat hard and Morsa takes a fan and did you hear that snap? God! That might be it, even with that delay. Morsa took the time to brag, but no, only a one. Gargano, that had to be instinctual. Wait, wait, Johnny Gargano still in it? Gargano with a kick to the back, but Morsa powers through. Gargano trying to make a comeback. Gargano might not be done. Super, no! Elbow right to the leg, forearm. Johnny Gargano making a comeback. The crowd on their feet for Johnny Wrestling. And a drop kick to the back of the head. Of course, you should never sleep on Johnny Gargano. That man has defied the odds throughout his whole career. In the independence, he's de defied the odds. And now here in WNEF, he looks to defy the odds, the ultimate odd against the Intercontinental Champion, a, a bona fide WNEF megastar, John Morrison, who has really done it all in WNEF. This is one of the biggest possible names you could get to prove yourself worthy of the main roster if he beats, you know, someone as huge as John Morrison, I think that'd be warrant for a call up already. Because John Morrison, he's a two time WBDF champion, former Money in the Bank winner, WBDF tag team champion, two time United States champion, hardcore champion, current Intercontinental champion, he's done it all. And he's gonna go for a spear, no! Morrison had too much time to recover and see it coming. Rookie mistake by Johnny Gargano. And John Morrison, 450! No! Oh, Flatliner! Johnny Gargano, oh, the senton! And now he's gonna go for the cover. He thinks that could be it. Only a one count. Johnny Gargano picks up Morrison. No, he misses whatever he was gonna go for there. Morrison. Oh! John Morrison showing off what he can do. And of course, you see Tommaso Ciampa at ringside there to support his best friend Johnny Gargano. Nothing more, nothing less. He doesn't want to hand Gargano because if Gargano, I don't think he would want a victory handed to him by Tommaso Ciampa. But Morrison is not going to make this easy for him. And oh, wait a minute. Whoa. John Morrison choking out. That's a, that's a, a cheat, a dirty tactic. Man, something about this match has just driven the. My God, look at this! My God, this is vicious. Something about this match has just brought out the worst in John Morrison. I don't know what the hell is going on with him. But oh, something about facing Gargano just brought out the worst in him too. Oh, I think Gar I think Ch Champa was ready to pull the ref out if he had to. I think Champa was willing to pull off the ref if he had to. Misses a dive. Oh, misses a close it, I should say. Misses a super kick. And oh god, a kick to the a kick to the head. I don't think Ogata knows where he is after that. His head almost came completely off his shoulders. And now, he's gonna go for this move again. A second drop kick. Oh, this time Gargano sidesteps. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Gargano, no! With 
with a splash. Bonnie Gargano in control of the match now. Making a comeback and now, Suicide Spear! And oh, Diamond Double Foot Stop! Cover, hooks the leg, hooks the leg! Oh, Morrison barely got a shoulder up. Gargano's like, what the hell do I have to do? And he's gonna go for another time, but no. Wait a minute, gonna go for a neck breaker. Oh God! Morrison. Oh, Morrison with a nice combination right there. about this this match has just brought up the worst in John Morrison I don't know what's gotten into John Morrison but this is not the same John Morrison that uh this is not the same John Morrison that defended that Intercontinental Championship against the likes of Barrett and Ryder Just doing whatever he can. And oh, four off by John Morrison. Wait, wait. Oh, it went for something there, but Morrison said, nah. -uh. Oh, backbreaker. Oh, neckbreaker. Kick out at two. Morrison almost had it, but Gargano just resilient. He has a fighting spirit. And I said earlier that Sami Zayn has a fighting spirit unmatched by anyone. Maybe the one person who could match it is Johnny Wrestling and a Poison Rana. Super kick! And now he's looking to finish the job! Is Gargano gonna do it? Pull the trigger, kid! No! Super misses! Super kick misses! Super kick! That's all she wrote! No! Chip pulled the ref out! Champa saves the match for Gargano, who just kicked out at the same time. And wait a minute, I don't think Gargano realized what he was looking at and almost had it. He almost had it. Tommaso Champa tried to help his partner win the biggest match of his career, but it didn't work. Oh, and now Morrison. My God, what a match. I thought for just a second that Morrison had it won. And what are we gonna do here? Oh, he's really trying that lawn dart. He's really trying that lawn dart. He won it, he won it. But Morrison is trying to avoid it as best he can. 
Because he knows that'll set up for the super kick. Neck breaker by John Morrison. Now cover. Oh wait, no! He went to the top rope for a moonsault. He hit it. But Morrison climbed the top. Elbow! That's it. You know, I, wait, wait, what are you doing? What are you, what is the Miz doing? Not the Miz, John Morrison, my apologies. He's very much acting like the Miz, though. He's acting like the Miz, though. He's very much in the vein of the Miz. Oh, he just decided, oh, Moonlight Drive wasn't going to be it. He was going to end it with the star. Shit, pay, but Chippa. Chip us to straight to the ref! Hey, wait a minute! Morrison throws Champa into the barricade, uh, around the barricade, a second starship pain! And Tommaso Champa might have only delayed the inevitable! What a match. I don't know what the hell's gotten into John Morrison, but it got him the win. Whatever he's done, it got him the win. And John Morrison has beaten Johnny Gargano. I don't know what's gotten into John Morrison, what this match brought out of him. But it brought out something that worked. Well, ladies and gentlemen, what an edition of WBDF United. I'm Cutter Winnie. And until Return of the Beat.